Hello everyone and thank you for joining today's showcase. We have a really well attended session today with people joining from over 25 countries and four continents. I myself, I'm joining from North Yorkshire in the UK and my name is Dan and I'm part of the International Schools team at Century, specifically working with schools in the Middle East. For those of you who don't know Century, we provide a personalised learning platform that is powered by AI and data science and is underpinned by proven neuroscience and learning science principles. So I just want to quickly cover some quick housekeeping. Please do feel free to let us know where you're from in the chat function. And you can also use the Q&A box to uh, ask questions to our speakers today. We'll, <coughs> excuse me, we'll collate those and get round to asking them in the last segment of today's session. I'm delighted to be hosting today's online showcase in conjunction with the School of Research Science in Dubai. Um, they'll be presenting on how they use innovative technology to boost results. We've been working with the school for over a year now, and I got the opportunity to visit last November. For those of you who don't know, it's an it's amazing school, and I think the highlight of the visit for me was being involved in the student award ceremony and seeing the zest, enthusiasm, engagement across all the students from all the years. So jumping back to today, I'm fortunate enough to have, a, have, have had a sneak preview of some of the topics and initiatives that will be discussed, and I hope and think you'll find it really useful. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to our first speaker today, who will introduce us herself and the school in more detail. Michelle, over to you. Good afternoon. Dan and colleagues from around the world, hi and welcome to uh, the Century webinar this afternoon in regards to how we're using Century Tech at um, the School of Research Science. So I am going to quickly introduce my colleagues and then get started. So thank you everyone um, for joining us. Joining myself today is our Head of Primary, Mike Clark here, who is also our Century Drive team lead. So he's sitting next to me and will hurry me on if I talk too much. And also joining us, you can see on the screen here is Adele Quigley. She's one of our lead practitioners and one um, in science in our secondary section. And one of the key drivers really of our journey of science and Century and how we've been driving it through. So what are we going to do today is talk to you a little bit about the school, the makeup of the school, how we've been using Century um, in a very short space of time, really, as, as Dan says, we've only been working with um, Century and the team at Century back in London for a year. Um, but we've had some incredibly interesting and um, results, and I think it's down to the consistency of the way we've been using it. So. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about how we've been using it. And um, as I said, you know, it's, it's gonna be, for every school, it's gonna be different. And obviously we're a unique school, like every school. We're in the middle of Dubai, um, middle of the desert. Um, and we have a very particular uh, group of students that we work with um, using the English national curriculum. So I'm just gonna share my slides and get started. If you do have any questions, please do feel free to ask, um, especially at the end. We're an open book and you know, we like to share practice and we like to learn from others as well. And this is just one way that we've been using Century and I'm sure many of you maybe on the call have plenty of interesting ideas as well. So I'm just going to share the screen and um, we'll get started. All right, so welcome to um, School of Research Science. And as I said, we're going to talk to you a little bit about how Century has been used in the school and how it's made a difference. For those of you that don't know SRS, as we call it, it's a, here's a glimpse of part of the school. It is a app building. It is huge. It's based on two sites here in, um, in our Waka here in Dubai. And predominantly, we serve a local population. So we have over 3,700 students here. We're an all through school. So from FS1 or nursery for our English colleagues, um, all the way up to year 13. But predominantly, our students come from local families. So um, Emirati students are our biggest group of students. So you can already see some of the challenges, but also some of the uniqueness and the beauty of the school in terms of you know, the intake that we have. Um, the challenge, obviously, as you can 
you know, start to get a, an idea in your head is the majority of our students, it's English is their second language. So they are Arabic speakers. Um, and yet every day we immerse them in the beauty of English, but also are very true to their culture and the Islamic faith that they, they are born and brought alive to. The majority of our students are in our primary section. Um, and we have, you can see here, the makeup of our, our, our sections here from three to five up to um, age 16. As I said, there's just over 3,800 students just under there, but the majority, two and a half thousand of them are in primary. So primary is huge. Why do we have a little bit different in secondary? Because we also introduce a pathway of another school from year nine, um, grade nine, where our students can choose um, to go into the US high school that we also have as part of the school. So for us, um, you know, as I said, being part of a very big organization, 3,800 students, some of our year groups in primary, you know, we have 18 classes, it's, it's phenomenally big. Um, so we have to be using and doing things very consistently. And I think that's one of the key things I would say to you about anything, as you, as I'm sure you're all aware, if you do something, you need to do it consistently and do it consistently well. And I think that's what's made some of the differences you'll see in terms of data for us um, and in terms of results and just some of the successes we've had. Um, how we did it was we, we have some key drivers here at SRS in terms of what we believe we need to drive forward with. What are our school improvement priorities? And three big ones that we've, you know, been honing our skill set on and, you know, getting colleagues, our teachers involved in that, getting students involved in that, is these three key drivers. And Century has absolutely um, not been an add-on, and I think that's a key part of our success as well. It's helped to drive some of these drivers. So um, literacy, obviously, is very important. Um, and we're not talking there just about reading and writing in English. For us, you know, we're big believers in disciplinary literacy, the, the literacy of a subject, the, the beauty of the language of that subject. As I said, you know, our students are Arabic speakers. They have a very beautiful language, which um, we also need to make sure that we keep true to them. Um, but we, we've looked at ways of how we can improve their, their literacy development and century has been brilliant in terms of our core subjects that we use it in, English, maths and science, in terms of driving that disciplinary literacy, the language of that subject, that vocabulary, the ability to speak that language, hear that language, but also understand those, you know, that vocabulary, that tier two, tier three. Um, that's very important to us as being one of our key drivers. Inclusion as well. So how do we include everybody? Um, is really important. As I said, we have a huge organisation. So we have students that are overachieving. We have students that need support. We have students that are doing what they should, but we want to improve them as well. So inclusive practice is something that we look at and how do we adapt the curriculum. Um, we don't differentiate. And I think Century is something that has been one of our, our reasons why we chose Century and in terms of that individualised pathway, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, you know, we believe in adaptations, we believe in knowledge, we believe in the power of knowledge, and we believe in adapting a curriculum to ensure everyone has that success. And that's why I've asked Mike to come and speak. Um, we're also um, big believers in HPL, high performance learning. And Mike's just going to say how that's aligned to Century with us as well. And you can see here, um, the idea that Century is, as I said, not a bolt-on, and I think that's part of the success. It's part of the key drive of what we do. Um, innovation is what we all want to be. You know, we all want to be innovative. We want students to be thinking on their feet. That's just not about technology. That's about, um, you know, solving problems, having that skill set. Um, but Century, as you can see, sits under those three key drivers for our school as being able to facilitate and support that. So it's only been a year. Why did we choose Century? And I think one of the first things that um, we looked at was the fact that, you know, as I said, that personalization, that pathway, which is something we couldn't do without doing a huge amount of work. And here Adele talk about teacher workload and how Century has been absolutely phenomenally good at helping to reduce teacher workload for us. Um, Century just really secures that knowledge base. And I think that was one of the big quick wins for us is using diagnostics, which you'll hear my colleagues talk about, to just 
you know, know exactly where students starting points were to then be able to adapt that curriculum to provide the growth needed. Um, as I said, Century really quickly and you know quite seamlessly was able to integrate and show us where students starting points are. And as I said, we took this on a year ago, students had been for us here in Dubai, had been in and out of school a lot, uh, similar to colleagues in the UK and around the world. I know with COVID, um, we'd been in learning, we'd been blended learning, we'd done, um, you name it, like all of you, we've done it blended, on-site, off-site, half in, half out. So, you know, there really was this idea moving towards getting everyone back on track. So I think Century was brilliant. That's why we chose um, Century to align with our practice, to get us knowing where students were at. And um, innovation, as I said to you, one of our key drivers, we don't want learning to stop. And, you know, I think that's one thing we all took away from having that period of online learning and COVID was that the beauty of learning can continue outside the four walls, much as these four walls that we're in are beautiful. Um, we want them to be able to continue and carry on, you know, at different points. And, you know, we have to be more flexible in learning. And I'm a massive believer in being flexible for learning and flexible learning opportunities. And Century was able to provide that for us. So how did we introduce it? People often ask me, you know, big school, lots of people, lots of pressures, you know, um, everyone vying for attention, everyone wanting to be top of your school improvement priorities. And I said, I always look for things in my role that can align and support core purposes. Um, then you amalgamate a team and how we've done it here at SRS is we like to call them drive teams, people that drive priorities. And I think that's that's where you get you get buy in when you see leaders taking it on as something that they're passionate about, something that they will drive through. You automatically get some buy in because leaders are prioritizing it. And I think that's one of the key things for us. So you can see here we amalgamated a drive team. Our drive team consisted of myself, uh, Mike. And my primary head teacher and our secondary head. And you know, our job was to bring the team together, um, provide support, provide challenge where's, where's needed. Um, and I think that's that's one of the keys of one of the successes here at SRS is, is the drive team and the relationship I'll talk to you about with Century as well. Um, we then obviously have primary and secondary here in our school. So we had to have key people driving it through. Once we've got the vision, how do we drive it through? So in primary, um, Century currently works with years three to year six. So we have year leaders um, and they're the person that's in charge of that year group. So they're middle leaders. Um, as I said, they're quite big year groups. Some of them are 18 classes. The smallest, I think, is 15. So they've got a lot of classes, but we made sure it was their priority to make sure they, they, they understood and wanted to implement Century across three subjects in primary, which is different. Whereas in secondary, obviously, you've got the beauty of your departments. You've got your key colleagues there. So what we did was we went down to underneath our heads of department in English, maths and science. We have lead practitioners, people that drive teaching and learning. They're your, you know, your best teachers, basically. Um, and Adele's one of those. So they're the ones that you know, have that responsibility. And one of the things we do, and I think Century is, is you know, it is one of those companies that doesn't just sell you a product and say, good luck, uh, you know, hope you do so well with it. Um, they're actually with you on the journey. And so for us, we, we did a roadmap, um, which I'll show you on the next slide, which shows, you know, just how, did you, how do you take something that's new? How do you drive it through term by term? But with support from Century, and we've been really lucky. I think Anna might be on the call. Um, hi, Anna. So we're lucky to have um, our Century implementation specialist with us, who we meet regularly, and I think that's really important. I get on the call. You know, it's it's a priority of mine to get on the call with her once a month with the drive team led by Mike to make sure you know she'll talk to us through some of our you know strategies we've been using, some of the things that we could probably do better, and there's plenty of them. Some of the things we're doing well. So she wants to unpack how we've done that. So I think, you know, for us, um, keeping that roadmap going has been key. What you can see here is something that we used in our initial phase as well. And I think, you know, once for me, once you start to write something down, sometimes people get more, more buy-in, you know, because they think, oh, well, I've written it down. I know I'm going to have to review it and make sure I do it. So 
what we did when we amalgamated our drive team and initially um, you know, had our training with Century last academic year, we wrote these CIP plans. They weren't massive documents, not meant to be. Sign up for two priorities. So, you know, primary obviously did it as a year group. English, maths and science in secondary did it as a department. All they needed to do was say to me, what are your two priorities? That's all I want you to do. Do two things, but do them really, really well. Here's an example of our implementation plan from one of our year six classes. Um, and what it was, was they said, you know what, we're going to use the end of year assessments. So they did them at the start of year six, last academic year, in the English, maths and science. And they, they could see where the gaps were for their students. So that meant it gave them an insight really quickly. It's self-marked, great. I'm not going to, you know, the diagnostics Adele will talk you through. But what that does is just give you an ability to customise your curriculum. And I think that's key for success. So what did it look like? Everyone says, what does this roadmap look like? Really simple, it's not rocket science, it's really simple, but it's there to be laid out. Um, it, we write it in a year, we write it at the start of a year, we adapt as we go on. And as I said, side by side with us, once a month, we've been meeting with the team at Century who keep abreast of our roadmap, we send it to them so they know what we've done. So what you can see is how do we introduce it to get that buy-in across a large school? Um, you know, term one, lay those foundations. We assembled that drive team. As I said, leaders in charge of that, leaders making it a priority. And um, Century uh, PDs, we do a lot of them. We still do them. We did them again um, at the start of this academic year as a refresher and we'll continue to do them. Uh, you know, and I think that they're, they're key to success. Um, it's student engagement. And at the end, I'm gonna show you something that was quite, we were blown away by, because when you introduced it to parents, and we got the students to do a video. I'm going to show you that at the end because it's actually quite special what they made themselves to show how and why, why Century and what it's doing for them to introduce it to their parents. Term two for us was all about taking it into the curriculum. So looking at those nuggets, introduce, you know, integrating it into schemes of learning. So it was part of the learning. And Adele will show you how that worked in science. And um, one of the other aspects that's been very successful is that intervention facility, that ability to know, okay, who's falling behind or who's doing really well? Where can we stretch? Where can we provide some more support? Um, so using it as an intervention tool. And then the third term uh, is looking at the data because there's a lot of data. Like anything, you can get a, you know, so much data um, and it's how you use the data. And one of the, one of the interesting things for us is seeing how that data, we're here in the UAE, um, in Dubai, we have you know, compulsory GL assessments that we do um, every year and we're judged externally on those. And I'm gonna show you, uh, you know, the success we've had. And interestingly, when we got the data back and looking over it for the two years, I'm going to just show you some of the highlights and what we put it down to is the implementation of Century, how that works. So for those of you not from the UAE, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about this phase two. So you can see here our GL results from uh, 2020, 2021. So prior to Century and 2021, 2022 with a year's implementation of Century. So here, phase two, for colleagues, that's our primary phase. But here, the GL tests are just done on four, five, and six. So imagine phase two is years four, five, and six. Phase three is our seven, eight, nine students that we have here. So it's our key stage three. So we do these GLs on English, maths, and science. We then look at what's here is what you call your stay nines, so your stay nine fives, and your stay nine sixes, your higher achievers. And then here we have judgments that are made externally by our um, inspection body, KHDA here. And you can see the judgments. And I just wanna show you um, some, of the, some of the wins. And it, it, took us, it took us back a little bit really in terms of that and how we pinpointed it back to century. So you can see here, um, you can see from English, you can see interestingly in a, you know, Mike's the primary head and he'll tell you maybe a little bit about what they're doing better in primary this academic year because we're learning from the success from secondary, which is why we want Adele to speak you through some of the successes there. So you can see here a weak judgment, still a weak judgment, small improvements, not great improvements. 
look at secondary. So it's gone from good to very good. Maths in key stage, you know, in key stage three there, that phase three from weak to very good. Check out science from weak to outstanding. How do you get that? How do you get that weak from outstanding? Now, you know, that's my job, isn't it? I'm a director of education. I look at data a lot. So the first thing I did when these results were starting to come through is I pulled the science department heads in and Adele and the first thing they told me, Michelle, it's century. I was like, huh, what do you mean? And they taught me through what they were doing. So for us, seeing that practice is, as I said to you, we're, you know, a year in, we've seen one department absolutely transform their results. And the thing they're putting it down to is how they implemented century in a consistent way going to talk to my maths colleagues, the same thing, weak to very good. Okay, there's some good to very good. So that consistency of practice by the use of century um, in key stage three is something now primary are learning from where they didn't have the same implementation. They don't have one-to-one -one iPad deployment. So I'm gonna hand over to Adele now, who's going to just talk you through how she's implemented it with her team in science and the success she's had there. Okay, Adele, I'll stop sharing just for you. Hi, Michelle. Hi, everybody. Uh, Michelle, can you just confirm you can see my screen okay? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, so um, just following on from what Michelle said, so we knew we had a lot of work to do, okay? So from our data analysis from the previous year, we started looking at why, okay, basically. We knew that the content was being covered in lesson, but the student retention over time just wasn't, wasn't increasing or it was continuing decreasing, I should say. Okay, so that's when we started looking at Ebenhaus's forgetting curve and his theory on memory retention. Okay, while it dates back yeah, to the 1880s, it's still highly regarded and widely used today. Okay, so we now use Century to help implement some of these theories to help with our student retention. Sorry, now. There you go. Okay, so how did we plan to increase our student retention? Okay, to ensure that our, our content was taught and revisited um, really regularly, we planned our diagnostics, our nuggets, and our post assessment. So, Michelle briefly talked to you there about the pre diagnostic. Why? Okay, we wanted to know exactly where our students were at, their prior knowledge and we want to alleviate some of the time constraints, okay? Doing this allowed us and the teachers to identify exactly where they needed to start and allowed us to go into deeper learning, therefore greater knowledge retention. Then after the next few days, we started um, integrating our nuggets to ensure that the, the students were revisiting as um, Eben House is forgetting curve, revisiting over three different occurrences over a seven day period. So how did we plan our nuggets? So we here at SRS, we use a distributed practice approach, which involves setting the nuggets strategically over timeframes to allow for maximum content retention. Okay, I, ex I explained already about the pre-teaching and the pre-diagnostics to identify the starting point. Okay, the do now and exit ticket obviously happens in lesson. After that, so this is really where we changed. Okay, so implemented Evan House's theories. We wanted to make sure that we were re reviewing the content three different equations okay so we always set our nuggets for homework a revision tool and we used it in the following lesson so the students were going back over the same content over three different occasions therefore improving on their memory retention of the new content learned so why okay so um, when we talked about century and memory retention, we wanted to make sure the century was fully implemented and fully integrated into our curriculum. Okay, as you can see from the screen, this is one of our year eight science curriculum. Okay, across the bottom, we have identified, and this is done for the whole year, exactly what diagnostics the students need to do and what nuggets they need to continue review. Okay, the diagnostics are done at the start of the cycle, but is also redone at the end of the cycle to ensure that students are shown progress. And then during our week nine, we have super teach or super learn week, which the teacher can then go back over any content that maybe have a bit of gaps in knowledge or something like that. Okay, 
the biggest, biggest win, okay? Teacher workload, okay? So Century has had a massive, and I mean to say massive positive effect in the workload here at SRS. Um, many of you will use or will be thinking about using it, okay? So Century, the nuggets, the homework, they're automatically corrected. Mike will talk to you in a few minutes about um, our successes. This year alone, I think we had nearly 2 million questions answered for Century. So let's think of that. That's 2 million questions that I did not have to correct, okay? So it has been amazing for reducing workloads. Um, this next one is for the continuous nuggets assignment. So Michelle talked to you a few minutes ago about it being the AI side of it and catering for all our students. So being um, integrated for the higher ability students or the students that might have a small bit of gap in their knowledge. So the AI or the dashboard was amazing and making sure that we were catching up the students that might have missed some of their learning because of the online learning. And it was also stretching and challenging our higher ability students. Okay, so some of the teachers gave feedback on the use of Century. So I'm just gonna read out their comments. It gave instant analytic information for us and our students. It provides the students with a platform to build resilience, which each nugget attempted. Teachers can track and monitor the effectiveness of the planned homework assignments throughout the cycle. It allowed me to monitor the deviation in average school scores between the boys and the girls as I teach in both sides. Okay, so as I said, workload and reducing workload, it was amazing. Two million questions, we're very happy. Okay, so our successes. Okay, so we love to catch our students doing the right, uh, great things. Okay, and we knew it was vital to recognize and highlight the century successes over the year. Okay, so as you can see from the screen, Alia, a lovely year four girl, okay, she had done over 80 hours of study at home on Century alone. Okay, Abdul Rahman, a year eight student, okay, over 7,000 questions. Okay, and this directly relates to their GL results. The Abdul Rahman did amazing in his science GL, okay, and it correlates very, very well. Khadija, a year five student, year five nearly 9,000 questions answered independently at home, okay? Then you had Abdullah, a year five student also, okay? 90 hours, so this is 90 hours that he spent at home um, completing either his math, science and English. Okay, and then that's over to Mike. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Clark and I'm the, the head teacher here of the primary section at SRS. Um, now, I'm just going to wait for these slides to tick out <clears throat> back to my one. So as primary teacher, uh, my role also uh, covers being strategically both for century and high performance learning, um, which is a real honour. And I know some of you on, this, on the call here will already be part of high performance learning schools. You may be on the pathway to being a high performance learning school uh, or might not be. But the reason why, why I talk about this is one century is a partner of high performance learning but also how HBL, um, sorry, how Century can align to your school philosophy, whatever it is. So here at SRS, as a HBL school, we believe that our students are capable of more. And if you're not familiar with what HBL is, it's a framework based on scientific educational research uh, that believes that students are capable of more uh, and the more we, than we first thought. And if we systematically teach our students the key skills, the key learning behaviors, uh, not only will they be successful academically, but also uh, in the ever-changing world that they're going to grow up, grow up in. So these key skills and behaviours that we're teaching them, they'll need at school, but equally they're going to need that on their first job application, their first day at work, their first day at university. And we're systematically teaching that, embedding that into them at a young age. And Century really supports that. So HPR underpins everything we do, and Century really supports that as a school. So just for a few examples, you know, we call them the VAAs. There are learning behaviors, 10 key learning behaviors that we really focus on with our students as a whole school approach, not just my section in primary or secondary, as a whole school, we all have a shared language. Now we know the best schools in the world have a shared language, both at school and at home. Ours is around our learning behaviors and Century matches that perfectly. When we talk about our students uh, working on practice, on perseverance, on resilience, 
but we're encouraging our students to become independent learners. So they're using Sentry systematically as part of our curriculum in school, but then we're also asking them at home to go above and beyond and to use it. And you saw some of those stats that Adele just mentioned, our students do that and they buy into Sentry and they enjoy that element of practice. And it helps our students to see that these key learning behaviors uh, not only can they use in school, but they can also use them at home. That you know, if they're practicing at home, they're persevering at home, it's going to help them both in later life. It also ensures collaboration, another one of our key learning behaviors here at SRS. And collaboration, not just between students, but between staff, students, all stakeholders and, and home. It's a shared language as a school. And it enables us to discuss the same thing together and have that shared language. We've mentioned a few times already the data that Century gives us. That data then enables our teachers to have really focused discussions with our students, with family members, with parents around the direction their students are going to celebrate the successes they're having. Century produces a lot of data. And what we do is we use that. We use that to really drive learning forward. So it enables that and in line with HPL and collaboration, you can see how that ties in. Well, the most important thing is that it's enabling our students to become independent, creative thinkers who are striving to be more and that whole school approach. And when I talk about the whole school approach, some of the stats that have been mentioned here, you can see on the screen, almost 2 million questions answered in one year. And we'll beat that this year. There's no question. You now we've mentioned that the science department in secondary, particularly the last year and the impact that's had as a primary section, we're very much upping our game and how we're doing it is that we're, systematically putting Century into our curriculum. How is that used in English, maths, and science? Now our students don't have one-to-one -one deployment of iPads, but where they are using them, we're planning for Century. Using that, using what we've learned from each other, sharing best practice to ensure that our students are engaging with Century because we can see the benefits that we'll have. So 2 million questions was last year, we'll go way past that this year. You can see the two and a half thousand students have engaged with Century last year. 2,000 nuggets completed. And one that I really like to see is that the second one from the bottom there, really 10,000 times occasions where a student has clicked the button to say they feel happy or proud of their work. And that's telling their student, that's telling their teachers that, that comes up on our data. We can see when the students are feeling proud of their work and we can share that. And that's not putting words in their mouth. That's them telling us that they are proud of something. And it's important that we share that as a school. We celebrate that success and Century enables to, us to do that. I've mentioned a few times a whole school approach. So this is our student engagement, but we also have our staff engagement as well. So you can see 132 unique teacher logins, 132 different members of staff engaging with Century. Uh, and you can see that we've got their 200, uh, 244 leadership dashboard sessions. That's where we're looking on the leadership dashboard. We're looking at that data and how we can use that data. Sorry guys. As uh, with everything, technology steps in, but I've stepped into another room and I can still be with you. So just to finish on what I was talking about there, those leadership, set, the leadership dashboard sessions where our teachers are going on, they're collating that data and then they're using that for focused discussions with the students, uh, with the families at home, with leaders in school, all to try and drive, uh, to drive the learning forward. And as you can see there, nearly one and a half thousand assignments are signed as well. Lots and lots of learning being planned systematically into our curriculum. So I will hand back to Miss Michelle. Um, and thank you very much for staying with us through those technical difficulties. Fabulous that was, wasn't it? Nothing like a power surge in the room we were in. It literally just all the electricity went out. Welcome to our world. So um, I hope you can see then, and we're looking forward to helping and supporting anyone with questions. As I said, you can see there, we were really happy to share the data with you. And phase two isn't a great they're still the same, you know, there's minimal effort, minimal changes there. And um, we were happy to share that we're not a perfect school. We don't do it brilliantly. Um, but what we do do is, is learn from each other, reflect and want to, want to get even better. And I think that's why I've left you with that slide. Consistency is what we know transforms very average into excellence. And that's what we try and do. Do some few things and you've heard Mike and you've heard Adele talk about it do a few things and do them really, really well, just to make sure that we have the best success. And on that note, 
I'm going to ask Dan to leave you now before we go into Q&A with, with the video that our year nine and year eight students made last academic year, actually year seven and eight, then eight and nine this year. And I think this shows you just what century means to them. Hi. First, to introduce ourselves, we are Jenna, Rowan, and Leila. And this is Century. We are here to introduce Century to you, the parents. This year, we are launching it for years 3 to 11 in English, Math, and Science. This ensures we have an outstanding outcome. We love it and hear some of our opinions. Usually, the teacher is always helping other students, but I found out that that's okay because Century is an amazing app that acts as a teacher. It offers you fun and entertaining videos when you're stuck, and it even marks your work for you. I love Century as it's a very entertaining app. Other apps like this are boring. Century offers you a variety of tasks and options to choose from. Hi, I'm Mahra, and I've been struggling with some areas in math. But ever since I found out what Century is, it helped me so much, and I absolutely love it. Century is such an easy and simple app to use. If you're ever unsure on what to do, Century will recommend paths for you, which is such an amazing feature. Century is such a helpful app. One of my favorite features is that I can easily access to revision tests, tests which is much more organized than most of the other apps. Century is such an amazing app with so many special functions. Let's start off with the recommended path it has put for you. Over here, you can see many tasks and assessment the AI recommended for you depending on your past grades. One of the most magnificent functions of Century is that it provides you with videos of a real teacher explaining to you the subject of the nugget. Nuggets are tasks that help us improve gaps in our knowledge. You can also choose whether you want the explanation as a video or as a slideshow. When you move on to the questions, there is a bar at the bottom of the screen where you should type your answer in. If you are struggling or don't know the answer of the question, you can always press I don't know. And if you type in an incorrect answer, it will give you an option to either move on to the next question or see the correct answer. Now let's look at my courses. Here you can see the courses Century has put for you. In my assignments, it shows me all the uncompleted nuggets my class teacher has assigned for me and the recent feedback. When I go to my dashboard, I can see my recently completed nuggets, the time I've spent studying, my active days, and my courses. In the courses section, I can take a look at my profile, my learning activity, my average score, my strengths, my areas of improvement, and how I can stretch my abilities. Finally. The achievement section allows you to unlock, but to unlock them, you have to do what Century asks you to do. For an example, to unlock this achievement, I have to complete 10 nuggets. So far, I've only completed 4, so I have 6 more to go. This section, this section here is the profile section. Here, you can check your account's detail, details, including your birthday, and change your username or password. You can also change your profile picture. This is all we've got for you today, and we hope these striking functions are enough to show you how spectacular of an app Century is, and thank you. All in all, Century is a life-changing app. We hope you enjoyed learning about Century. We hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching. Wow. Um, thank you so much, Adele, Michelle and Mike. There was so much great stuff in there. I loved things like seeing your progression with your GL results. Congratulations, by the way. I loved hearing about the various ways that you use utilising the platform. And lastly, uh, probably the thing I loved most was hearing the, the students at the end who demonstrated that zest and engagement that I referred to earlier. Um, I definitely love the, their honesty. I find that really refreshing. So now we've got some time for some Q&A. Questions have been coming through, so I'll try and cover as many of those as I can. Um, I am British and queuing is in my DNA, but I'm actually going to rip up the rule book and jump in there with a quick question of my own, if I may. Uh, and this is to any, any, any of you, really. So it sounds like you've continually reviewed how you use the platform and, and what you want to get out of it. 
Um, is that the case? And, and if so, are you able to share where you're thinking of going next with it? I'll let Mike do that one. Yeah, we said, so we mentioned a few times, obviously, our roadmap, and that's always something that we are evaluating. Um, we're always looking for feedback from our staff, from our parents, from our students, to what's working well. This year, as we've mentioned a few times there, a big focus for us, uh, obviously, in the primary section, I'll talk specifically around, is almost modeling, you know, copying, take, you know, magpieing, taking best practice from our secondary colleagues on how we can implement Sentry effectively, and how we can do it consistently, as Ms. Michelle said, um, consistently across large year groups, across you know, lo large chunks of the curriculum to make sure that our students are engaging in Sentry and that it's well planned uh, and that the data we're getting from that is then used as secondary are doing. So we're kind of learning from our best friends. So that's a big focus for this year with regards to the primary. With secondary, it's to carry on the fantastic work, but it's to, to keep exploring it more. Now, how, where else can we take century? So science has been a real positive. Can we take that into maths? Can we take that into English? But then equally, how, what more can we do with science? How can we engage our parents more? How can we engage the students more? How can we take Century to the next level? We're always looking to improve. You know, as we said, we're not a, a perfect school. We're always looking to improve. Uh, and that comes from feedback, from our data analysis. As a leadership team, as a drive team, we then discuss that. And we make plans that how we can improve that for the benefit of our students. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So our next question is for Adele. Uh, and this question is around how much time a week would you say it saves you on marking? Um, I'm okay, sure. So I teach an average of about 100 kids, okay? Um, previously, I would have spent about an hour every week on homework assignments. Now, I spend about 30 minutes on data analysis every week. So a good few hours nearly every week. Um, it's been amazing. That's that on an the hour per student? No, an hour per class. Okay. <laughs> that's a lot of hours <laughs> um so definitely probably four or five hours saved every week definitely without a doubt brilliant so the next question is from sarah uh, and the question is can i ask how you've gone about engaging parents yeah i mean so uh, obviously when we started century a little bit different here obviously in the uae we COVID protocols and restrictions a little bit. So it's really been engaging our parents electronically. So, you know, sharing the videos, uh, messages going home, newsletters through our students, uh, drip feeding continuously. We don't want parents to think that Century is a bolt on, that it's just something else that we do. That actually is part of their day-to-day -day diet. And they're the conversations that we're having with parents. So Century is part of our curriculum. Um, and then this year, obviously, we have our parents coming into school a lot more and lots of showcases, celebration events for Century as well, where we celebrate through awards. Uh, and we make a big deal of that because our students, as we mentioned, you know, we want them to be independent learners. We want to reward them when they're showing those behaviours. So, you know, as you would engage parents in any school in the world with us, it's just making our parents see that Century is not a bolt on. But it's actually something that we're doing day to day. It's part of our curriculum and helping them see the benefits as well. Helping your parents see mm -hmm. the benefits it's having on their children, because as a parent, that's, that's all you want to hear, isn't it? And sorry, and one of the other things, when we did our century rewards, we always changed the parameters of what we were rewarding. So for example, one week, it might be the amount of nuggets answered, whereas the following week, it might be the amount of time answered or spent on that nugget. So that we're catering for all the students. So then word of mouth, these students were going home and then being very confident, we were happy. They were showing their perseverance, linking to my HPL. So that is more word of mouth with our webinar and our video that we sent home. Brilliant. So the next question is from Tom, and it says, thinking about your initial reasons for working with Sentry, have your expectations been met? Are there areas where you'd like to develop further? Um, absolutely. I think, you know, initially, as I said, we went there because we wanted to, I wanted to get things quickly. Um, you know, we're, everyone's busy, teachers are busy. We needed to get information and, and data quickly. Um, so literally Century, as you've heard, is half the teacher's workload for us. So of course that met that initial expectation. I wanted students to be individualized, but also independent learners. Um, and we were struggling 
finding things that would do that without having to say to teachers, oh, plan 14 different lessons, plan 22 different tasks. It was crazy. We weren't going to do that. So absolutely, it's meta. Um, what do we want to see? We want to see it develop into more subject areas. So we're always on to century about that, saying, when are you doing Arabic of one of our key ones? When are you doing geography? When are you doing history? When are you doing that? So I think for us, it's about we're wanting, we want to grow with the organisation. We can see what it does. And um, so what even interested me, it's created a ripple in our school. As I said, we've got departments, obviously, that haven't got century content, but literally it was only a little while ago, mm -hmm. Adele and I were like, oh no, who's, who did those? Um, all these Arabic questions yeah. turned on, Arabic uh, turned on Arabic science questions turned up on century. And Anna was saying to us, oh, one of your teachers has created their own courses. And I'm like, wow and it was all in arabic so i wasn't familiar with it but um you know that's interesting isn't it that a small ripple in one section can have an effect in an organization so absolutely you know obviously for us it's it's been a really positive experience fantastic thank you so we've just got a, a new question in uh, and this is addressing the the big elephant in the room in, in terms of screen time and self-regulation of that how is that how do you do that and how has that changed since the uh, the pandemic with remote learning for example right okay so and um, what we do is we we look at all of our subject areas so obviously century is an online platform there's no getting away from it you know it is online so what you do is you look at other areas where you try and balance that an example i can give you is we used to use, um, for example, one of our reading platforms all the time. All our books were read electronically during COVID. Um, we came back in still doing that. We don't do that anymore. This academic year, we've said, actually, that's not going to happen anymore. Let's read real books. So you look at where you can balance. As I said to you, it's making those tweaks so you see a consistency in terms of approaches. Absolutely. Do we want, you know, we, we do have one-to-one -one deployment of iPad into our secondary and our year five and six students. Do they sit on an iPad the whole time? Absolutely not. Do we want them to? Absolutely not. So it's about looking at all your different practices and where you can now readdress the balance. And an example would be one of our reading platforms, which we no longer use um, because we want them to read real books again. So they're in a library, borrowing a book, opening a book and reading a book, which has been a, a change for many of them. Great. So next question is from Laura. Uh, have you moved away from other platforms and used Century Tech instead? Uh, we use a lot of platforms at our school and I'm wondering if we can replace some of them. Absolutely. So that's an example. We, we start to, you know, especially during, you know, online learning, you, we, we all went a bit over over the top didn't we with platforms because we're all some of most of us were still at home trying to do online teaching so we had a plethora here in in our school um and it's been the you know last academic year and this academy where we've rationalized so an example would have been we as i said we used an online reading platform and we don't use that platform anymore and um, because what we can do is use century to do our sort of reading comprehension, our English practice that we were doing similarly, and we want them to read real books. So, yeah, I mean, I think it's, we try and, as I said, use very few platforms now and, and readdress that balance because it is important that you have a balance. You know, nothing beats a teacher. I'm a big fan of technology, um, but nothing beats a teacher in a classroom teaching students and guiding them. That's our job. You know, and I think nothing will beat that. And that's why we need to make sure we balance all of that and have the same, you know, pedagogical approaches. And that's how we choose um, what devices and what technology we would use and what platforms we would use. It's got to align, as Mike and Adele have said, to our practices. You know, we're big believers in research of, you know, you heard her talk about the forgetting curve, you know, knowledge-based curriculum. So for us, Century aligns with that practice and aligns with our, our way of um, teaching pedagogy as well. Fantastic. So I think that just about wraps up today's showcase, everyone. Um, really appreciate everyone who's attended today. Uh, but I think the biggest thanks is definitely to Michelle, Adele and Mike. Uh, do feel uh, free to follow us on uh, on Twitter using those uh, uh, handles and hashtag as well as other social media channels. 
Um, it would be remiss of me not to mention that in the next two weeks, Century teams will be visiting Qatar, Oman, the UAE, and also Thailand. So please get in touch if you'd like to arrange a meeting. Uh, have a great rest of your day and indeed week. Uh, thanks once again, everybody, and, and take care.